everyone, this is Evgeny and I welcome you in the next episode of our LangGraph Advanced series. So today we continue looking into this uh, pre-built React agents and I will show you some interesting hints you also might want to try on your own agents. So join me and let's take a look together. All right, and today we continue our previous session where we are looking at this pre-built React agentic architecture and uh, the same thing I am defining first. Well, in general, we are going to look to uh, dynamic models and prompt customizations as title saying, right? And before that, I am defining the tools, uh, but the functions are the same. We have this uh, lookup stock symbol and we do have this fetch stock data row, but I redefine the function names. And uh, what do we have here? Let's define the basic agent that we did the previously in the first session, the previous video. And for that, we're using create react agent and I'm defining here model. This is chat uh, OpenAI uh, GPT 4.0 mini. I am defining the tools, these two functions I defined previously. And we do have a prompt. So if I compile it, you can see the same graph we saw already previously, right? But let's uh, make it a bit more complicated. And I mentioned that today we're going to talk about uh, dynamic model selection and prompt customization. So let's look at model selector. So in general, uh, the way it works, uh, we need to replace this model parameter and here we are, uh, this updated code and look at that. Let's start from the agent definition. We have the tools as previously and this is the list of uh, two functions we had already. Then we still have from the same plain based text, right, and uh, check pointer as well. But for model selector, we have a function and uh, basically what's happening here, look at that. We have a agent state and uh, there, well, it's up to you on which conditions you decide which model to use. But here in the example, we are analyzing the conversation and based on the conversation on the latest user request we decide which model to choose so for example we are saying okay uh, if uh, the latest user request has analyzed investor risks then we are saying okay this is really uh, we need to this heavy reasoning model and so we take this gpt4 and uh, this is our model we define it here Otherwise, if this is about summarization, we can say, okay, well, for all mini can be good enough here. So it's kind of kind of a bit lightweight model and we're picking it. Otherwise, we, we grab just a GPT 3.5 turbo for the rest, right? And uh, finally, it's very important thing. Uh, since we are providing a model from our function, we have to bind tools. That's why we have the tool predefined here and we are passing it here and there as well. And again, uh, this is the function, right? We're grabbing the state, we're deciding which model and providing it back. And here, instead of the model, when we are constructing our graph, we're just uh, passing the function responsible for that. And uh, surprise, surprise, uh, graph looks exactly the same. There is no differences, right? Here. And I'm saying just hi and Take a look at that. Uh, hi, it's not about summarization, it's not about really reasoning. So it was a default model selected here. We see the message and it was like just, uh, hello, how can I assist you today? And uh, we are still in the same graph. We still have the same config. So we're still in the same thread, uh, messaging thread. And this time I'm asking, please summarize what a human in the loop is. And look at that. And this time it says, okay, but since you have the summarized word there, then it's a, it's a GPTO mini, and then I'm using this one. And then uh, we have this summarization response. And the second thing you can fine tune here as well, I mentioned it was dynamic prompt modifier. And uh, this is this one. Look at that. Let's start again from creating a React agent. And I'm Again, leaving all the default values so we can concentrate on one thing at a time. We have the standard model, uh, we have the standard list of tools, but for prompt I'm providing a function, right, and I have checkpoint like in memory. But what this function performs, let's take a look. 
So basically what you need to understand here, it's not about providing real prompt at the end of the day, it's about the function gets the list of messages and it emits the list of messages. So it's up to, it's even not about uh, providing prompt itself, right? You can modify the list of messages if you want, like if you, if you want to create a more sophisticated case here. For us, it's very simple. What we are doing, again, based on the latest user request, we analyze it. And then we select different uh, kind of system messages, so different roles we want to allow them to take. So what's happening here, if you have this invest or risks, then okay, we are saying, well, you are a financial advisor. If it's about summarization, so summarizes in the user request, you are saying, okay, you are a summarizer, it's pretty simple, right? And if it doesn't explain that, okay, you are a teacher. And if none of this uh, met, in our request, then you're saying, okay, then you are just a helpful assistant and answer clear and simply. And here's another tricky thing, uh, because I mentioned already that based from this function, we have to provide list of messages. And practically what we need to do, we need to replace the already existing system message to the one that we just selected. So what's happening here, we are filtering our list of messages and we're removing all the system messages and practically this is the one for our use case. We have this non-system messages and then uh, we're creating our first system message and the rest of the conversation we are just adding to the end and returning this back to the uh, model. And this, this, this list will be sent to the model. I'm compiling it. Let's start again our very simple conversation. So let's say, hi, it's a new thread uh, just uh, from the um, clear field, right? Uh, nothing's here. And look at that, it's a default case, clear default case. And we are saying, okay, you're a helpful assistant and you have to answer clear and simply and just the regular response. Or I can say, okay, summarize what human in the loop is and the same kind of dialogue and I'm running it. And look at that, we do have a different prompt which says, okay, you're a summarizer, right? And the same conversation happens. So the role was dynamically replaced on the next step. So this is how it looks like we had two concepts here and now we can try to combine them together. So what we are doing here, I'm just copy pasting all the stuff together. We do have tools, right? We do have model, dynamic model selective function and it's the same, it defines the different models. And we have a prompt modifier, right? Uh, the same invest risks as a financial advisor, summarizes summarizer and explaining it's teacher or default one. And same filtering and uh, replacing the system message. And so we create in our agent, we are providing model as dynamic model selector. This time we have list of tools as a list. We do have this prompt modifier as a function. And I run it the same graph exactly uh, the way it looks from the outside. And this time let's try and see more sophisticated question. And I run it. And look at that. First of all, we have every function was triggered twice. We see it clearly, right? And we have uh, what's the Tesla stock symbol. And uh, it was a tool call for Tesla and uh, return back TSLA and the response. And for most cases, it was uh, GPT-3.5 uh, Turbo, so nothing really special. It's not about advising, not about summarization. It's a spring, uh, very simple uh, trigger for a tool call and a helpful assistant. So also nothing really serious here. It was the, the easiest case was selected for this very pretty simple example, right? And as I mentioned, uh, we saw that uh, every function was called twice. And this means basically it means that, well, you have really a way how to fine tune your graph. So it's not that for every graph run, you define which uh, model and which role you should take, but you define, you can define it for every single node because why do we have it twice? Well, look at that, we have an agent and uh, well, the agent uh, pick first the model based on the request and the prompt that it realized, okay, it's a tool call, it went to tool, to return back and this time agent has all the data and it decides again okay for the second round and it still need to pick the model and the prompt and again it was the same like a pair picked so we have it twice and then it generated the response and sent it back so this is what happened
maybe a uh, last example I wanted to show you. Let's pick a more sophisticated example, like summarize Tesla's financials. And um, well, it's number of two calls. We need to understand the Tesla's TSLA. We need to fetch the data and we have some summarizations more like sophisticated work. So let's check uh, which models will be selected, which prompts will be selected. OK, so I'm running it. And look at that, we do have a quick summarization. It's a lightweight for mini and your summarizer, keep the answer short and clear. And then for analyzing, it decided, okay, this is really heavy reasoning. I need to grab the, the more uh, advanced one, GPT-4 Turbo. And also the role is your financial advisor, not a uh, simple summarizer or just a helpful assistant, right? Then back we have our very expectable result, right? Uh, the financial data fetched from the two and uh, we do have some summarization here. All right, and maybe interesting thing to also check here, we can go back to uh, Lensmith and check the traces there because it's also interesting thing. So let me do this. Uh, we do have something and let's just pick the latest one, okay? And look at that, uh, we had multiple calls, like uh, the first one, it was chat, uh, it was GPT-4 on Mini for uh, the realizing the context. And look at that, the system message was your summarizer, so keep the answer short and clear, you decide, okay, this is about summarization, and uh, the model was selected to for all Mini. And then it fetched a uh, tool, fetched some data, and then we have uh, we have the uh, flow back to the agent. And this time the agent decided, okay, but I will grab GPT-4 Turbo. So we can see the model here. And uh, let's look at the prompt. And the system message was your financial advisor. So it was also was replaced. And uh, well, and it provided a completely different answer, like a real advisor, right? All right, I guess this is it. Uh, well, I hope you found it very useful. Uh, if you're interested in the details, I'm also providing a reference links here section at the end of this notebook as usual, so you can grab and check it on your own different details. But in general, you have two, really two beautiful possibilities. You can decide which model you would like to pick for a specific node in your graph or which uh, prompt you would like to take for that, right? And this gives you a lot of freedom to configure and fight to new graph. Well, and it was me, Evgeny. Thanks for watching this video till the end. Uh, in the next lesson, we will continue learning about different aspects of this pre-built React agent because there are some other stuff I wanted to show here. But in general, we keep our focus on advanced topics for uh, land graph. So let's stay in touch. Take care and I see you next time in the next video. Bye-bye.